yogis and welcome back to Green Eyed Yogi. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Brandy and I am so incredibly glad that you clicked on today's video and decided to join me. We are going to be moving through a very yummy, very gentle prenatal flow. You do not have to be pregnant to do this prenatal flow. It's a nice gentle flow um, if that's something that you're looking for as well. But for all my soon to be mommies out there, I decided that I wanted to create a flow for you guys um, so that you could come back to it whenever you want. One thing that I want to note for sure is that since I'm not there, since I can't, you know, keep an eye on you as we're moving through this, please make sure that if at any point during the practice something does not feel comfortable, something feels too intense, or it just does not feel right, please, please, please come down gently out of that pose, being mindful as you move. Um, there is no right or wrong answer in yoga, so take as many modifications as you need. We are gonna be using a bolster, and I'm gonna be showing you how to use two blocks in this practice, but if you wanna grab onto a blanket, some towels, extra pillows, just get as comfy as you want in this practice because this practice is for you, and if you're not comfy, then What's the point? I don't know. I just want you guys to be as comfy as you possibly can during this practice. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in watching, then let's get into the flow. So to start off our flow, we're gonna come into a nice seated position. We can either come into a crisscross applesauce position, or if you feel comfortable, we can take one foot in front of the other, whichever feels most comfortable to you. And if you need a little bit more support in the hips, you can always place a blanket underneath the hips as well. Once we come into our nice, comfortable seated position, we're gonna bring the hands to the tops of the knees. The hands can be either down or up to the sky. That is completely up to you here. And just closing the eyes, resting in, taking some nice deep breaths here, sending them down, connecting ourselves here, first to ourselves. We're gonna start a mental scan of the body, starting from the top of the head, sending it all the way down to the tips of the toes. Noticing the body here, any parts of the body that feel sore or tight. Making sure we send a little extra love to those parts of the body during our practice today. Noticing also at this point any parts of the body that feel extra good. Too often we spend our days only noticing the body when it is hurt or it is sick or not properly functioning. Today let's take a moment to seek out the parts of the body that feel good, that feel like they're properly functioning. Sending a little gratitude their way, thanking them for all that they do. And once you've completed your mental scan of the body, we're gonna draw the hands to the stomach here. Now that we've taken a moment for ourselves, coming in here and connecting mommy and baby, breathing in here. And as we sit here connecting mommy and baby, taking a moment to really think about how amazing this moment is how amazing that you are and all that you're doing and how excited you are to meet your baby. Breathing in here, we'll keep that left hand on the belly as we take our right hand up towards our heart. Breathing in here, really tapping into our intuition Noticing little different ticks of the body. And using this intuition as we move today through our practice. Knowing that if at any point something doesn't feel right, to gently and mindfully come out of that pose. This intuition will carry us very far during the pregnancy. And then whenever you're ready, we'll draw those hands back to the knees. We'll take three deep cleansing breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Exhale. 
And after that third breath, we'll gently flutter the eyes open here. And we're gonna start to create a rolling motion through the torso here, first taking it forward all the way around, nice and gentle here. Don't feel like you have to over-exaggerate any movement during this entire practice. Just being nice and gentle, waking up the spine here. Tucking the head as we take it back and then bringing it back to center as we take it forward. And then we'll take it in the opposite direction here, just moving with the body. And then coming back up to center. And from here, we're gonna work through the neck a little bit. Necks are a thing that we all could use a little bit more time stretching out, giving them some nice release here. So even and especially during the pregnancy, we wanna make sure that we give ourselves some self-care here. A lot of stress and tension can be held in the shoulders and the neck. So that's what we're aiming to target here with these stretches. So to start, we're gonna take our head over to our left shoulder here, just bringing our left hand on top, not pulling down, but just allowing a little extra weight to carry us over here. Feeling this nice stretch. Making sure we continue that breath work. And taking our gaze down towards our left knee. And then taking that gaze up towards the ceiling over our right shoulder here. From here, we'll bring it back to that left shoulder. We'll remove our left hand and gently trace our head down through center as we take it over to our right shoulder. Right hand can then come up on top. Once again, we're not pulling down, just adding that little extra weight here. And taking our gaze down towards our right knee. and up towards the ceiling over our left shoulder this time. And back to center here. We'll remove this right hand, drawing this chin down to the chest, bowing the head here, getting that nice stretch through the back of the neck. Nice cervical spine stretch here. Really breathing in. Feel free to take the hands to the back of the neck giving yourself a nice little moment of some self-care and some self-love, massaging up into the base of the skull or down onto the trap muscles here that connect the shoulders to the neck. Breathing in. I would like to say, especially during this time, is very important to indulge in a little extra self-love, a little extra self-care whenever you can. But I think we as a human race don't indulge in self-love or self-care enough in general. So I definitely feel like taking little moments here, just even for a nice gentle massage of the neck, can be loads on your spirits and your energy levels. Whenever you're ready, we're gonna gently draw the hands back down onto the knees as we take our gaze up towards the ceiling. Opening up through the throat here, feeling that expansion as we breathe in. And coming back to center. From here, we're gonna draw the arms up overhead, palms facing each other as we reach up here, reaching up through the crown of the head, through the spine, and drawing it down so that our right hand comes to our left knee and left fingertips just come right behind us. 
From here, we're going into a gentle twist. So we don't wanna crank ourselves back here. We wanna just come into a nice twist here, bringing first the upper body, the torso here, into a gentle twist. And then we're not going to take our gaze all the way back behind us, but just tracing our nose directly over our left shoulder. So as we take that gaze back here, Slowly, we'll come back to center, taking the arms up overhead once again. And this time, we're going to draw the left hand down to the right knee. Right fingertips come right back behind us. And once again, we'll move through the chest first, followed by our gaze. And coming back up to center one more time, arms come up. And this time, we're going to draw the left hand down onto our mat here, taking the right hand up and over. Nice, gentle side stretch here. So you don't need to come all the way down. Remember, we're taking it nice and gentle. Just breathing into the rib cage here for sure, as that is expanding during our pregnancy. Really getting a nice stretch here in that side body. At any point, you are welcome to go deeper into the stretch, but we also want to make sure that we start off gentle and then increase that instead of really cranking into something first. Breathing in. And then we'll come up and over, drawing the right fingertips down to the mat. Left arm comes up and over as we stretch the left side body here. Once again, targeting that rib cage. Breathing in. One more breath here. And then we'll come up to center. Great job, guys. From here, we're gonna interlock the fingertips behind the back. I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see this. So we're gonna interlock the fingertips behind the back, drawing the fist down towards the earth as we open up through this chest here, really engaging with those shoulders as we draw those blades together here. Gaze can be at center or just a little bit above center here. Breathing in. And then exhale, we'll release those hands, bringing the fingertips, interlocking them in front of us this time, turning the palms away from the body. We'll push through as we round through the spine. Once again, nice and gentle here. And coming back up to center. Great job, guys. From here, we're gonna work through the wrists real quick to make sure that we wake up the wrists before we bear any weight on them. So we're just going to interlock the fingertips and gently start to roll through our wrists here. If you find any catches in the wrist, feel free to roll over those a few extra times here. Just waking up the wrists, getting them nice and limber here. And bringing the hands to prayer. Drawing those palms down towards the earth, a little bit of space might be created by the bottoms of the palms. And that's that kind of pressure here that we're creating to stretch the wrists out. And gently drawing the tops of the hands together, just doing a little reverse action. And if there is any other stretch you want to do with the wrist before we move into our tabletop position, take this time right now to go through those stretches, just making sure that the wrists feel nice and loose, nice and ready to bear our weight here as we are moving into tabletop position. So as we move into tabletop position, we want to make sure that our knees are directly underneath our hip points and that our uh, wrists, elbows, and shoulders are stacked in the front. If you need a little extra space between the knees here, feel free to take them out just a little bit more, um, but we want to make sure that we're keeping this integrity as much as possible here. So once we have our tabletop position, we're going to move through a gentle cat and cow sequence. So on an inhale, we're going to take our gaze up the wall in front of us. Belly lowers just a little bit here. As we move into our cat, I want you to think about starting at the tail here first kind of rounding and tucking that tail under and just bowing the head as we go, taking it chin to chest as much as you can. You don't have to super round the back here, just making a little bit of effort, going as slow as we can here. 
cat and cow is something that we can take at our own time, at our own speed, so feel free to take all the time in the world here. We'll move through three more of these at your own pace, at your own time. Remembering that there is no rush here. And then after that third cat and cow, we'll meet back in that tabletop position. Once we're back in that tabletop position, we're going to bring our big toes to touch here. We're going to take the knees as wide as the mat. If you need it any wider, feel free to do so, or if this doesn't feel comfortable, you can always take it back and closer together. Really be in tune with the body, feeling what feels right and what doesn't feel right in this moment. Once we have the feet, the big toes together and the knees as wide as you like them, we're going to start to walk the hands out in front of us. This is going to be a little bit of a power pose, a little bit of strength training. So make sure that we're really engaging with the arms here. As we're walking the hands out in front of us, we're coming into half puppy dog pose or a modified puppy dog pose. As we're coming into this, we're keeping active arms the entire time. The chest is melting towards the earth, hands pressing into the ground, and if you'd like, you can take your forehead down onto the mat. If this feels too intense at all, but you really still wanna get that nice stretch in the shoulder blades, we can take a block here, bringing the block underneath the forehead to bring us up just a little bit more here and resting the forehead down on that block. Really getting into those shoulders as the heart melts down towards the earth. And slowly we'll press back up into those hands, walking them back about two steps closer to the body, still keeping this incline here. And if you were using a block, we'll move that over to the side for just a moment, okay? So we're gonna press into the foundation of our right hand to start, gently taking that left arm up towards the ceiling, and we're gonna take it down, gently threading it underneath the right, coming to rest on our left shoulder, left cheek here. If this feels too intense, feel free to come out of it and we'll hold just a gentle, taking the left arm out in front of us and drawing it across the body here. But if we are down in our threaded loop here, we can also take this right arm back behind us, reaching for our left hip crease. Just a nice gentle extra twist here as we move into this pose. And taking that right arm back onto the mat here, Pressing into its foundations, we'll pick ourselves up, taking that left arm up and back down in line with our right. This time we're going to pick anchor down into that left hand, picking the right arm up and threading it underneath, coming to rest on our right shoulder, right cheek. Left arm can always come back behind us. And like I said, if that is too intense for you, you can always take the right arm out in front of us, taking the left arm and gently guiding it across the chest here. Just really trying to get into that shoulder area here, getting a nice arm stretch. There is no right or wrong answer. If we are down on our shoulder, on our cheek, we'll, remove, we'll turn our left hand back onto the mat, pressing into its foundations, picking ourselves up, taking that right arm up towards the sky and placing it down in line with the left. From here, we're gonna shift the hips all the way back over the heels coming into a child's pose. Now once again, if you'd like that block here, feel free to grab onto that block. As we take it down here, resting the forehead onto the block and taking the arms out long in front of us. From here, we're gonna press into the foundation of our hands, picking ourselves up, our hips up just enough to curl the toes under. And from here, if you have that block there, we're gonna set it out of the way once again, pressing into the foundation of our hands, pressing into our toes, we're gonna to pick ourselves up, sending it up and back into downward facing dog. As this is our first downward facing dog of the practice, feel free to alternate a bend in each knee, walking out the dog here. 
Really getting nice stretches here in the calf muscles. A lot of the times this can be an area that we get cramps in during the pregnancy. We want to make sure that we're stretching out that area as well as getting a lot of water. Water really helps with the cramps here. Breathing in. And then whenever you're ready, we're gonna fight, start to find some stillness here. Sending our weight up and back towards our heels. Our heels do not have to touch the floor, but sending our weight up and back will help us elongate through the spine here. Breathing in, and then we'll slowly start to walk the feet towards the hands, coming into our first forward fold of the practice. In our forward fold here, we wanna make sure that we have enough space between the feet, so if you need to widen your stance, feel free to do so. And then we're just gonna grab onto alternating elbows and gently allow ourselves to rotate side to side here in our ragdoll stretch. Feeling free to alternate some bends in the knees. Just feeling really loose and gentle here in your forward fold. And then releasing the hands down towards the earth. We'll inhale halfway lift, crown of the head reaches forward. Exhale, we'll forward fold. From here, we're gonna gently bend through the knees and come all the way up to standing, moving vertebrae by vertebrae as we come all the way up into a standing position here. Taking it all the way up. Once we get to that top, once the head comes up, we'll roll those shoulders back three or four times, really engaging with the shoulders here, getting a nice roll, breathing in as we do so. and then coming to into Tadasana or Mountain Pose. So for our Mountain Pose, we really wanna check our alignment here. So we wanna press down, our feet are about hips distance width apart. If you'd like, you can take them a little bit further if that feels better. From here, we're gonna press down into all four corners of the feet, really rooting down into the earth. From there, we're gonna feel an activation through the calves as we press against the earth. We're not just standing in here anymore, we're pressing against the earth, Pushing up, you may feel a tightening here through the glutes. The thighs will roll forward just a little bit. And our hands come to melt down by our side. Our head is over heart center here, just resting nice in a neutral spine position. And our hands, like I said, come resting down by our side, breathing in here. Feeling this balance here. Tadasana may not seem like a balancing pose, but I think it is a very, very important balancing pose, in my opinion, as we are standing here on our own two feet, feeling what it feels like to be balanced, to be standing here. I think it is a very good start into our balancing poses. And during our pregnancy, we may feel like because our our gravity center, our center of gravity may be changing due to the beautiful growth of baby inside of us. We want to make sure that we check our balance here. We want to make sure that we feel balanced and strong on our own two feet. Breathing in here, one more breath, and we'll gently open the eyes, start moving the fingertips here, just swaying side to side, just getting a little bit of movement here. I think a really important thing that a lot of people forget about yoga in general, regardless of prenatal or not, is that yoga is just mindful moving. So just walking to your car, walking from your bathroom to your bedroom can be yoga when you're taking mindful steps. So even though some people may say, you know, moving side to side, wiggling around is not yoga, I think it is important, especially now during prenatal, that you know that any movement you take that is mindful is very much yoga and very much important to your process. From here, we're gonna anchor down into our left foot, picking that right knee up just enough so that we can rotate through that right ankle. Really targeting that right ankle. You can turn the toes down towards the earth, really stretching through the tops of the feet as well. As we 
go through our pregnancy, this might be a part of the body that feels neglected a little bit, um, especially as the baby grows larger. We might feel like we're starting to get cramps, like I said, in those calves, and the ankles start to feel sore. So it's really important to spend some time on the ankles as well. And gently we'll place that right foot back down, anchoring down into it. This time it will rotate through that left ankle. Once again, you can bring the toes onto the top of the foot here, pressing it down into the mat, getting a nice little stretch here. And just rolling it out. From here, we're gonna face the front of our mats here, pressing down first into that right foot, taking that left foot back behind us as we come into our warrior two pose. So once we have our position here, we wanna make sure that our right knee is directly over our right ankle and our left foot is coming back behind us. You can shorten your stance as much as you'd like. It can be as close as you want or as far back as you want. Really be intuitive here with your body. Listen to it. If this feels too intense, feel free to come out of it. We want to make sure that the back left foot is on a little bit of an angle facing the back left corner of our mat here. Once we have our feet sta uh, stance here, we're gonna turn our hips, squaring them to the left side of our body, <laughs> trying to figure out directions here, the left side of our body, and we're gonna open up through the arms here. Beautiful warrior two pose. Our gaze is over our middle finger of our right hand, breathing in, feeling strong in this pose. You're so strong, so beautiful in this moment. From here, we're gonna work through the shoulders. So we're gently gonna roll up through the shoulders, taking the palms up towards the ceiling, and then rolling through the shoulders, pressing the palms down towards the earth again. So rotating them up and rotating them down. One more time, rotating them up and rotating them down. Great work, guys. One more time, actually. Rotating them up and rotating them back down. Great job. We're gonna leave our left hand back here completely like it is. We're gonna turn the top of that right hand up towards the sky, bringing the palm up towards the sky, leaning forward just a little bit, and we're gonna take it up and back into Peaceful Warrior. With our left hand, we can bring it down to the calf if we feel comfortable. We can bring it to the thigh, we can bring it to the hip, or if you'd like, you can wrap it back behind the back here, reaching onto the other side, reaching for your right hip crease. Once we have that set up, we're gonna just take that right arm up and over, making sure we keep that bend in the right knee, Breathing in. And then we're gonna come up through center once again and start to bend this right elbow, bringing it to the top of the right knee. Once we have that placement set, we're gonna take this left hand up towards the sky. Breathing in. If you'd like, you can take this left arm up and over, reaching further than the crown of your head. And then we'll bring that left arm up and as if someone was picking us up from this hand, as we're pushing it up, we're gonna come up and out, back into our warrior two. Great job, guys. You guys are doing amazing. From here, we're gonna turn onto the toes of that left foot, coming, bringing the hips square to the front of our mat, coming into a high lunge. Whoop. <laughs> Making sure we check our balance here. And then we're gonna press down into the front, right knee, right foot, pressing into its foundations. We're gonna pick ourselves up bringing that left foot up to meet the right. So once we come back into that standing pose, we're gonna breathe up into these hands. Exhale, we're gonna forward fold, taking it down. Inhale, we'll halfway lift, coming up to a flat back. Exhale, we'll forward fold. And then slowly we'll rise back up into standing, gentle bend in the knees. Rolling up vertebrae by vertebrae as we come into our standing position once again. We'll roll those shoulders back three times. Even more if you'd like. It's always up to you here. And then this time we're going to switch it up. So we're going to press down into our left foot this time. I'm actually going to come to this side of the mat so I can still face you guys. So now we're pressing into the left foot. So we did the right foot on the other side. We're pressing into the left foot. We're bending that left knee over that left ankle, 
and we're taking our right foot back behind us. Once again, check your stance, how far or how close you wanna be. That right foot is on a little bit of a diagonal angle with the back right corner of our mat here, and we're breathing in. Once we have our leg stance, we're gonna square our hips forward to the right side of our body, squaring those hips, opening up through those arms, taking them out wide here, feeling strong. Once again, in your warrior pose, breathing in. And this time we're actually gonna work through the shoulders a little bit more. So we're gonna turn the palms of the hands up towards the sky, and we're gonna take the arms up above us, allowing them to kiss. So my hands are kissed above me, and then we're gonna turn the tops of the hands together. So we're bringing the tops of the hands together and pulling them back down into our warrior two arms. We're gonna do that three more times. So we're gonna turn the palms up towards the sky, bringing them up to kiss, turning them away from each other, and bringing them back down. One, two more times here. Turning the palms up, bringing them up to kiss, turning them away, bringing them back down, being really mindful as our last one of the shoulders here. So we're not just kind of flopping around with the hands. We wanna be really mindful in the chest here. So once again, we're gonna turn the palms up towards the sky, bringing them up above to kiss, and then turning the palms away from each other, bringing them back down into warrior two arms. Great job, guys. From here, we're gonna leave our right hand exactly as it is, turning the top of the palm of the left hand up towards the sky. We're gonna reach forward just a little bit and taking it back into that peaceful warrior. Once again, this right hand can come to the calf, the thigh, the hip, or wrapping rack around the back as we come into our peaceful warrior. Breathing in one more breath. As we slowly come in out and out of this, we're gonna to start to bend that left elbow, drawing it to the top of the left knee. Right arm comes up towards the sky, or it can go up overhead, extending through the crown of the head area here, reaching out in front of us. Breathing in here. And then if our right arm is out in front of us, we're gonna take it back up towards the ceiling. And as if someone was pulling us up from this right hand, we're gonna come up and out of it, taking it back into a warrior two arms. Great job, guys. From here, we're gonna turn onto the ball and the toes of this right foot, bringing the hips forward, high lunge, feeling as gravity's drawing us down here. And from here, we're gonna press down into the foundation of that left foot, that left knee, and it's gonna pick us all the way up, bringing our right foot to meet our left. Standing up tall here, breathing in, Exhale, we'll forward fold, taking it down towards the floor once again. Inhale, we'll halfway lift, reaching up, crown of the head reaches forward. Exhale, we'll forward fold. Great job, guys. So once we're in this forward fold here, we're actually gonna press our hands down into the mat, stepping back into our downward facing dog. So we're gonna press both hands into the mat and gently step back with that left foot, followed by that right, Coming it back, shifting the hips all the way back. Weight going back towards our heels into our downward facing dog. From here, we're just gonna shift forward into a little bit of a plank position just for a second, working through those shoulders and taking it back into downward facing dog. Great job, guys. From here, we're gonna draw the knees down onto the mat. Really good. Walking the hands back towards the body and sitting back onto our feet here. Coming onto our butts, taking our feet out long in front of us. So as we shift our bodies down onto the mat once again, we're gonna breathe in here, taking our arms up overhead. Gently, we're just gonna forward fold just gently here, taking our hands to wherever they wanna fall. So if that's the calves, feel free to place them there. If that's on the thighs, feel free to place them there. Just a nice gentle forward fold allowing the head to bow here, but making sure that we're not rounding too much through the shoulders, just that nice forward fold here. Breathing in. If you ever like to get a little bit more from your forward fold, you can always place a blanket or a towel underneath the knees, giving them a little extra of a um, bend here, or you can just bend them like I'm doing, but having that support is really nice and just gently forward folding over those bent knees as well. And that, like I said, can be used with a blanket, a towel, anything you like here. 
Just a nice gentle forward fold. And coming back up to center. Great job, guys. From here, we're gonna draw that left foot into our right thigh. And once again, we're just gonna gentle forward fold over that right leg. You may find that you can get further into this stretch than you could over both feet. You may find that you can't get as deep in the stretch as you could on the other. But feel free to just move how your body wants as we slowly come down. Once again, trying not to round through those uh, shoulders. Just gentle forward fold, bowing the head. And slowly we'll come up, taking that left leg long, drawing the right foot into the left thigh here. And once again, just gentle forward fold. You guys got the hang of this now. You guys look great. And slowly we'll come back up to center here. From here we're gonna take our right foot back out long and then we're actually gonna bring our hands back behind us for some support as we draw both of the soles of the feet onto the mat. I'm gonna readjust just a little bit here so I'm more center for you guys. From here the feet can be out as far from the body as you want or as close to the body as you want. What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna move into a figure four stretch. So we're really targeting that sciatic nerve area. This is also where like the glutes and the lower back meet and where the acai, the acai joint is. Um, so we really are targeting that area as we're moving into this. So once we have the hands behind the back and the feet and the soles of the feet are on the mat, we're gonna start by picking up that left foot and drawing the left ankle on top of the right knee. Feel free to use some support here, grab onto it yourself if you need to, and just drawing that right knee in as close as you can, as close as you want here. That right knee and its closeness to the body is going to be how deep the stretch is for you. Breathing in here. You may roll the ankle a little bit if you'd like, getting in a little extra stretch here. Breathing in. And then we'll take that left foot down the right, gentle here as we place that left sole of the foot back down on the mat. From here, we're gonna pick up the right foot, right ankle comes to the top of the left knee, taking the hands back behind us once again. And the extent or the closeness of that left knee to the body will again determine how deep the stretch is for you. So it can be all the way out here. If you're feeling the stretch, feel the stretch. Don't feel like you have to force yourself up into this, especially with our beautiful baby right here. We wanna give ourselves extra space to just move here and breathe. And then we'll gently take that right foot down the left leg, drawing it back onto the mat. Good job, guys. And we'll come bringing the soles of the feet into Baddha Konasana or bound angle pose. So from here, I'll turn to face you guys. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together. The feet can be as close to the body or as far away from the body as we like, just like everything else we've been doing today. So once we have the feet together here, I'm gonna draw mine just a little bit closer. We're gonna bring our hands to our ankles to start. Just breathing in here, making sure that we're looping those shoulders back away. We're not rounding through there. We're really opening up through that chest. Just sitting here, feeling gravity, draw the knees down towards the earth here. If your knees are already all the way down on the mat, that is amazing. But if you need a little extra support, you can always grab a block here, propping it underneath the knees on either side or feeling into that stretch, feeling gravity pull us down into this stretch here. So we breathe in. And then we'll release our hands here, drawing the hands now to the toes, interlocking the fingertips and everything around the toes, kind of hugging them in here. And then we're gonna forward fold. Now this forward fold is not gonna be super intense. We're just taking the head forward just a little bit 
bowing it as we take it forward, opening up through that chest as we're doing this forward fold. Breathing in. An option here is if you have a bolster or a really big pillow, I highly recommend doing something where you prop your forehead up on the bolster. You can take it down. You can always put the bolster in between your legs here and here, hugging it in and forward folding over that to make it just a little bit more comfy here, a little bit more relaxing and gentle um, as we're moving into these poses, making these a little bit more restorative um, in practice with the props up here as we move. So just hugging it in, or if we're not using that bolster, setting it aside here, just gently forward folding. And then we'll slowly come up to center. My final pose that I'm going to leave you guys with today is a supported restorative pose um, for my prenatal lovelies here. Oh, I'm actually going to be using blocks and my bolster to do so. You can always use a bunch of pillows or if you have a bolster or something like that but no blocks, you can use books as well. The best way that I'm going to set this up today is reclined supta baddha konasana. So it's a reclined, reclined bound angle pose like we were just doing. And to set this up, I'm going to bring one block onto its highest or onto its lowest setting here, sorry about that. And then I'm gonna bring the second block on its highest setting, but at an angle here, just kind of creating a nice little recline. And then I'm gonna bring my bolster on top of both of those blocks here. So allowing my blocks to create that ramp for my bolster to lie upon. Once I have that nice little ramp here of my bolster, I'm gonna turn away from it bringing the uh, base of my spine here, the sit bones, right up against that bolster. Once I have my spine right up against the bolster, I'm gonna draw my feet into that Baddha Konasana again. If this doesn't feel comfortable, you can always take the legs just out in front of you. But for now, we're gonna bring those feet into Baddha Konasana, bringing them in here, and then we're gonna draw both hands to either side of the bolster. If you need to readjust like I just did, feel free to do so. Once we have our hands to either side of the bolster, we're gonna slowly lean back onto the bolster. Breathing in here. If you have extra blocks, you can place the extra blocks underneath the knees, underneath the hands. You can always place a blanket on top of you here. There are so many options here to get really nice and comfy. Breathing in. And just relaxing into this pose, allowing those shoulders to melt off either side of the bolster. The chest is melting up towards the sky, opening up here. And we're just breathing. From here, we're gonna draw our right hand to our heart. Left hand comes up onto the belly here. Once again, connecting mommy and baby. Returning to this idea that this moment is such a magical, beautiful moment. That you yourself are so strong and beautiful. If you have time here to move into a Shavasana, I encourage you to take some time here, maybe lower the lights, light some candles, turn on some music, adjust the temperature in the room, whatever you like, laying back into this pose, or if there's another pose that you feel more comfortable in, or you feel is more yummy to you at this time for a Shavasana, feel free to take that. Shavasana is our final resting pose um, at the end of our practices, and it's just a nice moment to rest down into the earth, um, take a moment to quiet the mind and everything. But if you are in a hurry, I understand. So if you have time uh, for your Shavasana, take a moment, pause the video, and then after your Shavasana, come back for this last little minute here. If you are in a hurry, like I said, I completely understand. As we come up from this pose, we're gonna draw either hands back to either side of the bolster here. 
and pressing into the foundation of our hands, we're gonna push ourselves back up into a seated position. We can then take the legs out long or come into a seated position once again, however you choose. I'm gonna come into a seated position one last time here as we take the arms up overhead, allowing them to kiss above us. And we're gonna draw the hands down in three stages. So first we're gonna draw the hands down so that the thumbs graze our forehead. We stop here to remember that our thoughts have so much control over the things that we do, the things that we say, and the way that we feel. But we have control over those thoughts. So as we go out into the world, I encourage you to observe your thoughts, to learn from them and grow with them. Allow yourself to cultivate a mindset of positivity that you can take with you wherever you go, allowing this light to begin from within you. Slowly, we'll draw the hands down into front of the mouth. We stop here to remember that our words are powerful. Our words are so incredibly powerful. With them, they bring the ability to change our lives, to change other people's lives, and to change the world. So as you leave your mat today, as you go out into the world, I encourage you to speak kindness onto others as well as onto yourself. Allow that light that began from within you to shine out and touch other people's lives. Slowly, we'll draw the hands down to heart center. We stop here to remember how beautiful this moment is. We bring one hand to heart, the other hand down to the belly. The final resting place of our hands in today's practice. We take this second to thank our bodies for all that they do for us. We take a second to thank our minds for all that they do for us. We thank ourselves for all that we do, for every obstacle we've ever overcome, for every achievement we've ever achieved, for all that we do, for everyone we help. We thank ourselves for coming to the mat today and doing something purely and totally for ourselves. We take a moment to connect mommy and baby here this magical, beautiful moment. How much excitement we feel to meet this baby, to have them in this world, and how lucky we are to experience this moment. I'd like to take this second to thank you so incredibly much for sharing your beautiful practice with me today. And I'd like to say that the light in me truly sees, honors, respects, and loves the light in each and every single one of you. Until we meet again, namaste. Thank you guys so incredibly much for coming to the mat today, for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. And if there is anything that you uh, would like to see from my channel, anything that you would like me to make a video about, please, please, please feel free to leave me a comment down below with those suggestions, with those recommendations or requests, um, if you will. I would love to make anything that you guys want to see. Um, and until we meet again, Thank you so much. Namaste.